Good morning. So we are here with a nine-week-old cavalier, St. Charles Spaniel puppies. Um, he turned nine weeks old yesterday. Enzo, Enzo went home yesterday. And then, um, so that's kind of why we didn't make a big deal about their, their nine-week birthday, but... So today, um, the boys officially are nine weeks old. The dogs. Are old. They'll be ready for their uh, their um, their booster shot for their vaccine series, and um, so we'll give the three of them their their next um, next next booster so that we can complete the series and they will be fully vaccinated against all that all that icky stuff like parvo. but first thing in the morning. garage sale season we go hunting for decent blankets but you'd be surprised at how many decent like how many decent blankets people are just looking to get rid of because they take up so much space and blankets are a hot commodity here for our puppies and so but it can get expensive when we're looking for big full plush blankets and so it's best to get them used, you know, when they're for the dogs. And so garage sales are are usually trader troves for puppy supplies. Um, for anybody who might be wondering, Puppo Plays is Bradley. Puppo Plays Slayer is Bradley. That's Bradley saying hi. Let's see. Oh my goodness, we've got a bunch of people who joined. Good morning, Lisa and Jean. Good morning, Sheltie. Oh, Jan, hi, how are you? How's Minnie doing? Good go potty, Vienna. Good girl. Uh, good morning, Bradley. Dan, Linda, I hope it's okay I call you Dan. If it's not, I'm sorry. Daniel. Mm -hmm. 
little boy. So anyway, so we turned nine weeks old and our first shot was given um, at about seven and a half weeks. We usually try to give it as close to eight weeks as we can so that um, they have a little bit more room when families bring them home to get into the vet to complete the series. Um, but I looked at the, the packaging a little bit more closely and saw that we could give it as early as 42 days old, which means that we can give it when they turn six weeks and then we can give it the second dose again right before they leave. And that way when they leave our house, the series has been completed and they are completely inoculated for that all those um, diseases and they don't have to, um, because of all the different variations of the different vaccines and so, it's always good to have the very same one that um, we use. We use the the standard vaccine that just about all vets across the board use um, for puppies, and so it's not usually an issue. But it's just nice. It's for peace of mind, I guess, when for the families and for us when when they walk away and they're driving home to know that their puppies have gotten the all the full protection. You know, everything but rabies, I should say. But they've gotten, they've received the full protection and there's nothing more that needs to be done as far as that goes. Um, whereas when they've only had the one shot, they, it's just another thing to remember. And my further health, it's, um, it just, if you get, it makes it less complicated, or it makes it more complicated when you send them home still needing their follow up shot. And then that way, their rabies. You know, the rabies can be given once once they can give it at 16 weeks. Um, it's just one shot. It's not a series. So they just have it and it's done. Unlike this one that we give, it's for, um, I think it's for, um, it covers five different diseases, but a few strain, it covers two or three strains on one of them. Feel. And then that way they've so they've been to the vet already. And so they had a really good positive experience at the vet clinic. And then when they go home with their families, their families established with their vet, they shouldn't need any shots at first visit. So that'll be another good positive interaction. And so they won't have their next um, shot until rabies. Baby, what's up? Minnie is doing great. She's sitting on Daddy's lap. Oh, <laughs> I should I should have just asked if she's who, whose lap she's sitting on. We're gonna start guessing each morning. Or you want to see Daisy? I really wish Daisy wanted to see you guys as much as you want to see her. Daisy's going to have to get used to two of you. She sure is, isn't she? You go, you go, boy. Oh, you go, boy. I felt so terrible. I got hit with a migraine. Um, and I get migraines whenever something goes off kilter, the weather, my body, illness, anything, I get a migraine, stress. Um, and our weather has been shifting from 60 degrees to 20 degrees. We went from snow from 60 degrees and sunny to snowing in within 24 hours. So I think that that's what's been going on, but I felt terrible because Pickup day is like, we talked about pickup day being like the culmination of these whole eight weeks that we have been preparing the puppies and their families for. So it was disappointing to not be able to um, see more of Enzo's pickup. It's so quiet with only three of you. It's so quiet. Oh, no. 
You can lift up your pants and you get in there. That's what you feel feet. Daisy is a beauty. <laughs> She's my girl. I adore Daisy. Blenheims are like hands down my favorite coat color. They can be so beautiful in so many ways. Like whether it's like the really classical look, kind of like how Rio has that the thumbprint, um, <clears throat> with the right amount of chestnut and having a nice dark color. Um, but then they can also have the, not be the so classical Blenheim. We had a we had a split face Blenheim once. Um, you see, second letter had a split face Blenheim, and he was absolutely adorable. Um, he had a split face, but everything else was the way it was supposed to be, with a thumbprint on his head. His name was Charlie, but he was absolutely precious, and um, he was a good little puppy. But Blenheims, I feel like they have a lot of. Um, diversity and how they come out. Um, tricolors, I think, are also really pretty. But Blenheims just are my favorite overall. Tricolors are a close second. I'm really hoping for a handful of black and tan puppies from, from Remy because black and tans are so cute. They're little teddy bears. Heavy puppies. They're so cute with the puppies. Have any of our pups gone on to confirmation competition? We don't do confirmation. <laughs> we we focus on just um, like the psychological aspect. The we spend our time trying to um, uh, what's the word? We want we want to focus our energy and time on um, either working on making our puppies the best. Um, like socialized, most therapeutic. We try to really nurture those traits. Um, and we don't want to split our time and efforts with something else and start only giving 75% or 50% toward um, what we kind of do this for, which is um, producing. We want to we want to bring and introduce well socialized and um, well-raised dogs and poor families. That was kind of the trouble we had when we were first looking for a cavalier was we were looking for a cavalier that had been raised for the purpose of just being a really good pet. And as we were looking around, we just found the only um, quote unquote breeders we could find were just people who were putting their cavaliers together and mating them. They weren't raising them so to speak if that makes sense they weren't um, like proactively doing things with them and so and that was what we were looking for and so when we we got missy um and when we decided to get spike about a year later we had the same problem where we couldn't find a breeder that was actively raising them and um so that was why when we got spike we decided we hadn't we hadn't um, spayed Missy yet, and we got spiked. That was when we decided to um, put. Um, that was when we decided to start looking into maybe we should start um, raising puppies the way that we think that they should be raised, so that then there's because surely we can't be the only people that we're looking for um, a puppy. And I try to be really. I try to be very specific with my words because we were we looked for a rescue and initially we were hunting for a rescue dog. Um, we worked as a, a rescue at Foster Home for rescue dogs um, for about 15, 20 years. And so that was what felt like the most right thing to do. Um, but the situate so we were looking at different rescue dogs and it was not going well. We met several of them and each of them had some different baggage. And um, 
while in the past we probably would have, there would have been a few we would have adopted and then chosen to continue working with to help help them with whatever trauma they were dealing with. Um, our situation, however, at the time, we couldn't really afford to, not money afford, but we couldn't, um, with our three-year-old son just having passed away, we didn't want to risk bringing home a dog that the kids are going to get attached to that would um, have a lot more work that would be required than um, just a standard puppy that had been um, that had just been born that relatively speaking came with a fresh slate um, and then mold from there and so when we were looking for breeders maybe we were being a little picky but um, we were looking for somebody who had a more proactive approach in raising them and we really struggled to find that. Um, the most we could, the best we were able to find was uh, kind of there. There were breeders who had them more in their home, um, and that was where we got missed. That was the breeder we got Missy from. She had a, she raised all of her Cavaliers in her home, um, and so we found our dogs from breeders that are closer to what we were trying to find and what we want to be. Um, but that's why we don't, um, that's why we don't do other things like confirmation, um, because in order to kind of, in order to put our all into one, we can't divvy ourselves between multiple, um, between multiple goals, I guess, that are goals that are that different, um, because confirmation is a whole nother, it's a whole nother thing. And then we would also be choosing our dogs or the dogs that were mating, we'd be choosing them differently as well. Um, because there would be certain things that are just more or less important. Mm. Such a good girl, Daisy Doodle. Mm. Good girl. It's kind of like the same reason we wouldn't, um, or the same reason we don't, because you could. The same reason we don't, um, we, there's, same reason we only do Cavaliers and why we don't do Springers or um, or Cavapoos or some sort of variation because let's use Cavapoo as an example. If we were to um, get a couple of poodles and start um, investing in the, in the Cavapoo um, industry, I'm not sure what to call it, that area, um, that side, um, there's a lot we don't know, and we know a lot more about Cavaliers than we do about Poodles, and um, given how much our knowledge base that we have for Cavaliers now, I mean, that would help us if we would want to do Cavapoos, but um, we would still need to learn all about Poodles, and we need to learn about um, there's a lot that goes into mixing one breed with another breed with the intent of, you know, the, making that designer breed. Um, there's a lot to learn as far as, um, uh, like it's, it's kind of, it's a different process than just, um, your standard, um, typical way that we choose our moms and dads. It's a much different process for, for when you have two different breeds that you're when you're trying to make that designer breed. I don't really like the word designer breed. That's why I don't really like to use it. Um, I don't know what else to call it. You're a good girl, Daisy Doodle. I got pictures from, um, from Daisy Dog uh, families, and one of her, let me see if I have it, one of her, um, one of her girls looks exactly like she does. Let's see if I can. So she's dressed up in a princess outfit, so bear that in mind. But that's Daisy's. That's Daisy's first um, daughter, first female puppy. And so a little bit of comparison. And there's Daisy Doodle. 
Crazy. Can you be the judge? Crazy. Can you see your face? <laughs> She's so no. Now we can see you, Daisy. Let me pull that back up. So there's Daisy's. Like they look like they could be twins. You have no idea that Spike, at least I would, I would realize that Spike is mixed in with because they look so much alike. Daisy! I have another one. But if I didn't know better, I would think that that could be a picture of Daisy. Oops. Her name is Frankie. And she's actually, she's in Louie's litter, I think. Yes, she's in Louie's litter. Cindy, um, Cindy Jacob, who is often in the live chat. She, um, that puppy that I just showed you that looked just like Frankie, she's the litter mate to Louie. Hey Peggy, I am feeling a lot better. Thank you. I'm feeling so much better. I think it's the weather. In fact, I don't think I said good morning to you, Peggy. Good morning. Good morning, Anne and Jean. Not quite sure where I left off. Kathy, good morning. Uh, Gene, you took your spring balance in obedience. Joey didn't do the greatest, but it was fun. I grew up with a, my, my childhood dog was a liver and white English Springer Spaniel. She was um, overweight and her tail was docked a little too short. And so every time she wagged her tail, it would just wag her whole butt. And so she had the nickname Wiggle Butt her whole life. But um, Springers, it was my early experience of Springers that actually got us into Cavaliers. Um, when Drew likes to share the story about how when we first came upon Cavaliers, he was doing a Google search for a family couch potato dog. And he did that Google search and found Cavaliers. And when I saw Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, I said to him that um, English Premier Spaniels are the dogs that I grew up with, that they were great family dogs. And, um, and we also did, um, we also fostered English Springer Spaniels. So, um, for English Springer Rescue America, um, and they're such good dogs that, um, Cavaliers were related to, to if they were a Spaniel, then, um, then we knew that we might be onto something and we're so glad that we took that chance because by the time we got Missy, we were so we had tried the rescue dogs so many times. And so by that time we had met so many that hadn't worked out. We, as I were thinking, like maybe we were just weren't finding the right breed, um, but we just felt so defeated. Like we just weren't going to get a dog, um, which was important at the time because um, our kids had, we just lost our son and we wanted to get them a dog that they could bond with, that we didn't, we weren't going to be concerned that, something was going to crop up in a couple of months and we were going to have to get rid of the dog without the kids being able to understand why. Um, to even illustrate that actually one of the, one of the dogs that we met. Um, so Matthew had just passed away. So Bradley was five. Um, one of the dogs we met, uh, I want to say her name is star, but um, she had been in foster care for about a year, I think. And, uh, we talked to the, the foster family and we talked to the rescue and she seemed great. She was great on paper. 
Um, she we asked why she had been in for so long, and they couldn't really explain why, other than she just hasn't found a family that she fit with. Um, and um, like all the videos, she's had a lot of great videos. She seemed perfect. Um, and so the kids really wanted it to work out, and we went and met her and her foster family at a neutral location. I think it was a hardware store, actually. And um, we could tell that the dog was nervous. And so, you know, we talked to the kids about behaving. And, you know, first Drew and I went and met her. And it was okay, but the dog seemed nervous. And so um, we tried to be respectful of that. And when we introduced the kids to her, she um, all of a sudden, um, like, she had been sitting. and she like lunged at her le leash and leapt forward at Bradley and she got within, I was standing next to Bradley and she got within about a foot of the space and she'd been sitting down probably like over where the mirror is on the other side there. And so, um, you know, of course we decided we weren't going to get that dog, but my whole point in telling the story was that on the way home, Bradley still was asking if we could bring her home. He was so, um, he was just so, um, he was in such a place of just needing love and comfort that even if the dog wasn't very nice at first, he just wanted a dog, any dog. And, um, and so we didn't want to, we didn't want to, we didn't want to risk bringing home a dog that would have to be taken back or, um, require so much training and so much um work that we would have to tell the kids like no you can't snuggle them you can't cut them you can't do this you can't do that and so that's what uh that's kind of the point when drew and i sort of gave ourselves permission i guess it's what, it's what kind of what it felt like to get a dog that was not from a rescue because we felt so guilty we felt um like we were doing something wrong. And finally, we we eventually concluded, obviously, that um, what was most important in our lives at that point was our family being able to, us being able to rebuild our family. Um, now that we didn't have our son and um, everybody was grieving in their own ways, and so it was not something that like brought the family together necessarily. It brought me and Drew together, didn't bring the kids together. Um, but we realized that a snuggly sweet puppy is one thing that everybody could just stop talking and every, that all of our kids, they can all relate to, they can all enjoy the puppy without even speaking to each other and still bond and still feel that love and comfort um, without having to do or, um, say anything. And so it takes the pressure off. Okay. And then they have a, hey, love you. Love you. they have a, co a common, um, common, I don't want to call it hobby, but they have this, this puppy in common, this living creature to take care of, to, that, that licks them and loves them them and it's another a new source of joy in their lives that they all can share together so um that's that's the lengthy explanation of how we ended up getting from a breeder as opposed to a rescue um, and that's also why we don't tolerate a lot of the um i call it pet parent shaming um when a lot of the black and white, um, it's wrong to buy from a breeder because not everybody is in a situation where they can they can take care of and nurture a rescue dog who needs those extra supports. And it's best if families like ourselves, for us to recognize that we couldn't provide that foster dog that we went and saw, we could not provide her the attention she needed to work through um, what she had going on. And if we were to take her, she probably would have regressed a lot when um, if, 
that if you come into our house where she needed all this attention and um, not just attention, but um, all of this very, very unique and individualized training um, just to be part of the house, just the, like, not just, I'm not talking like um, walking well at a leash. I'm saying like to reduce food aggression, to um, stop from biting, to um, just to be a respectful member of the pack. Um, we would have had to go through a lot of training. And so when a society guilts and shames people into getting a rescue dog that they're not equipped for or just not at a point in their lives for, um, it can that can do more harm than, than good. Um, back when we fostered rescue dogs, when we had families get a dog that they would take home and then a couple months later they would bring back, um, I would say nine out of 10 times when the dog came back, we usually had to go back to square one, not square one, but we usually had to back up a lot of the training and the work that we had done with them um, and remind them like, okay, you're back in our house. We're back in this, this place where we've got these rules. And, um, and so they picked it up more quickly, but they always came back um, with regression which is only normal. It doesn't mean that the foster or the, the doctor family did anything wrong. It's just that we had kind of, we had really honed in on what their needs were and we had um, become really consistent. And as much as we explain to another family, it's very, very difficult to just replicate that. And so I'm not, I'm not um, blaming the adoptive family at all. It's just that when he went from our house to their house, um, his routine changed. Um, or their routine change, their um, just all, all everything that the dog was used to is uprooted, and and they're with new people, and so and that's another thing that another reason that Drew and I do the the FaceTime and the visits for people who are local because um, another thing that we noticed with rescue is um, the more families visited their dog before they actually brought him home, um, a lot better the dog did. And so we try to apply that. And um, even with FaceTime, we've been amazed at how well FaceTime, how far it goes. Um, I know that the dogs, the puppies can't see really well with their eyes, the screen. But what they get a lot out of is hearing their family's voices and um, um, hearing their family's voices and then smelling their um, shirts and blankets or whatever that they sent that smell like them while they're while they hear them talking and so they might not really um, pick up on the screen a whole lot they are listening and um, paying attention to that other stuff so uh, any news on Remy um, I still need to take her temperature for this morning last night she was 100.8 so no signs of labor yet no temp dip in fact let me put that in there now we'll go get a current temp on her. I'm gonna go get her temperature. You're reminding me. Thank you.
Paris, top out. So we've got another temperature that gives us more questions and answers. Um, it's 99.7. And like I said before, the, the normal, I'm sorry. Missy, Missy, that's enough. Um, so the normal temperature when they're not about to go into labor is between 101 and 102.5. No. So um, her 99.7 temperature um, is kind of why we don't usually like to do temperatures because um, the normal temperature is, one, is over 101, but the temperature that signals the onset of labor is below 99 degrees. And so having a baseline is good. Um, because you know, if their temperature is naturally a little bit lower, then hers is gonna have to drop a little bit lower than usual. Um, but her baseline was like 101.5. So um, when we get readings like 99.7, we don't really know what to make of it, other than um, she could be about to have her temperature drop um, and it's just on its way down because it does take several hours for the body to cool. Um, and so we'll get it again here, because this happened a couple days ago. We'll get it again, um, probably about noon, or one o'clock in three or four hours, just to get a retake. And then if it's still 99.7, then um, I'd say it's probably going down. Um, the retake should put, she should be back up to like 101. But if it's starting to go down, it'll probably still be in the 99s or lower. Um, and John, so the temperature, it's not really important. Um, and we haven't, we, so we don't usually do temperatures and this is why. Um, and that's because it's, there's just a black and white textbook explanation that says, you know, this is what you're gonna see and this is what you can expect. But it's not typical that, um, the readings and measurements are always black and white. And so oftentimes we just get more questions and answers and it's frustrating. And then we'll be trying to figure out what is going on there. And then there's other more reliable things we could be looking at. Um, with pom pom, it was really accurate. And so that's kind of why we wanted to start doing it again to see if maybe it would be helpful. Um, pom pom was the first one that we didn't really like really take her temperatures until we started thinking that maybe she was gonna have her puppies early and then we took her temperature and it was like 90 92 I mean, it was very clearly she was very clearly going into labor um, but there's a whole host of other signs they um they're usually very very antsy and restless um you'll probably see her at our feet everywhere as we're walking around um she won't eat she will stop eating her food she has a very voracious appetite right now um, at times, it's not always when we're necessarily feeding her, but then it'll pick up a couple hours later. Um, but the morning that she delivers, or I should say the morning that our other moms delivered on those mornings, they usually woke up and ate a very big breakfast. And then their appetite after that went away and, um, everything kind of kickstarted beyond that. So, um, Ruby temperature is 99.7. Yeah, it was like another, it was just <laughs> another unhelpful.
Gee, we're very excited. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, I think we're going to start putting them, like, three of them. Sorry, I was in another tab or something. Uh, but we're going to start, um, before Theo goes home, we want to put them into the kitchen with the other dogs and let them play with the older dogs since Theo doesn't have, he's not going to be going home to older dogs. Um, we wanted to give him some exposure with some of the bigger dogs that, uh, can teach him some of the rules and some doggy etiquette. What made us keep two of them? So um, we decided to keep Vienna when we realized we were going to be Spain, Paris. Um, we were very excited for Paris to be a mom and she just has a lot of really great attributes and characteristics and her puppies all turned out so amazing that we hated to only have one litter from her. And so um, with Vienna looking so much like her, we thought that keeping Vienna would be um, a way to kind of continue Paris's line. Um, and we're really glad we did because as the puppies have gotten older, they have all sort of developed that um, super snuggly, cozy, limp, um, it's hard to explain, but they are super snuggly, um, like more so than our other puppies. But, um, so we decided to keep her right away, or like not right away, but initially. Um, Rio, we were not gonna keep him initially. Um, he was actually, he was selected by three different families. First he was picked um, during like that initial reservation. Um, and then they changed their minds. And so he was available then for, for reservation um, and another family selected him. And then um, they, changed, they changed their minds. And then the most recent family or the last family um, decided that, first they picked him and then they decided that they wanted a girl. So um, when that happened, we felt like when it was a third one, we were kind of like, third time's a charm. It'll work out. And then um, we felt so bad for him because he's such a great puppy and he's turned out like even better. And we're kind of like, wow, we're really missing out. Um, and so, but he's such a great puppy that we were thinking maybe this was a sign that we should hang on to him. Um, reason being is that um, we've been looking to replace Spike as our Blenheim. Um, there's a couple things about Spike that we want to improve in his puppies and, um, but there's a whole lot of good from Spike. And so we didn't want to necessarily get rid of his genes, but we thought that actually replacing 
his position as stud dog with a version of him that has Paris, Paris's genes mixed in, um, would be a nice combination. And then we've had several litters um, of our moms with spike puppies. And so we can kind of use that as sort of a, a little bit of a visual gauge just by adding a little bit of Paris into those puppies. Um, it's hard to visualize, but um, since we we already see, you know, what Spike produces, and then we will dilute his genes a little bit and then add Paris's in there. So we're excited to have both a mom and a dad, um, a stud dog and then a mom. And so Vienna will be paired with Macchiato. She'll always be paired with our black and tan um, until and unless we get um, another stud dog. Um, but she won't be able to, um, did I say Paris? Uh, or no, I did not Vienna. Um, she'll have to be mated with Macchiato. Um, so her her puppies will be Blenheims and Black and Tans. And then Compom will also have to be mated with Macchiato uh, since Rio will have Paris's genes, which are essentially Compoms. And so um, Compom and Vienna will always be paired with Macchiato. And then uh, Rio just can't be paired with Pom Pom and Vienna. Going the other way around. So Macchiato is, we'll have to see if he's up to the task because Spike has been fathering all of these puppies and now Mike's, or Macchiato's just been standing by and now Macchiato is gonna be the big stud dog in town until Rio is old enough to take over. So we'll see how, we'll see how they do. We're so excited for Remy's puppies. I can't wait to see what they look like. Puppy dogs. It'll be kind of interesting to see how Vienna and Rio um how they land in our pack of dogs. Because I think Vienna has a bit more dominant of a personality than Rio does. So we'll see how we'll see how it turns out. But um, with them being Paris's puppies, it would be kind of interesting to see how they're how they um, how the sort of the trajectory of our puppies, you know, what what um, what route they take? Do we start having more Paris puppies, more Paris descendants, I should say? Your good girl, Paris. You're so pretty. Hi, Pom Pom. Yes, you're pretty too. Who's your pretty girl, too? <laughs> more blood in the better. I love Glenham. There's just something about the Glenham color that it's it's so pretty. It's so regal. Good girl, Vienna. Good go body. Are you not in here? Good morning, Bella. Yeah, why don't you use Dad's bathroom? Yeah, use Dad's bathroom. I just flushed the dog right down the toilet. That's just for me. Uh, oh, we got Paris. Oh, 
go, Papa Doodles. How's everybody today? <laughs> Theo's just going to dig everything out. So, Linda, the reason we're putting Vienna with Bella is um, <clears throat> to give each and so, um, when they're this age, eight, nine weeks old, um, and we're bringing them away from their litter mates and starting to teach them how to be a dog as part of the family, as part of the house, um, we, kind of, we signed them to one of the kids. And so, like, Paris is with May. And May can focus on Paris and she can um, take care of all of her needs. And Paris kind of has learned to just always pay attention to May. And so if we put Vienna with May and Paris, it'll start kind of splitting that up. And so with Bella's age, Drew and I are kind of doing some of the training first and then putting Vienna with Bella. But like with Rio and the way we did Paris with May, um, with Rio with Bradley, so what we're doing is um, we're, we have a pen set up in Bradley's bedroom and it's outfitted kind of the way this one is. And um, so that way Rio has access to his tray all through the night um, and he'll start kind of in that pen and it's Bradley's responsibility to take care of him. And then um, as he gets a little bit older, he can bring him up in bed with him. Um, but by doing it that way, by doing all of that, um, dogs and puppies to bond very strongly with the person who is feeding them. And so we want, um, the most important thing is we want them to be getting their food from whoever it is we're trying to bond them to. And, um, and so part of that is they, you know, they feed them in their bedrooms. Bradley will be feeding Rio in his bedroom, but the other piece to that is that all their other needs, it kind of goes the same. It's the same with all of their needs. Whoever it is that's meeting their needs is who they're going to go to and look toward for when they need something. Um, and then they also have a sort of a sense of responsibility to that person. And so um, it's very, I mean, once they, um, when they have gotten attached to them, it's, very useful. Some people kind of laugh at us, but um, when our kids are like in trouble, they need discipline and we encourage them to hold their dog or get their dog. 
Um, a lot of times if they're mad at us, they'll just say no. But um, it really helps to bring them to a place where they can hear and communicate and um, we get so much further um, having having the dogs and for our kids and they have that the one dog that they know loves them. And I mean, they love everybody, but they're really, they're especially bonded to like Paris and May. Paris is especially bonded to May. And so um, even when Paris had her puppies um, and was with her puppies, when May would need her for something, if there was something on her mind or she was upset about something, I would say, well, here, take Daisy. Daisy's great. Um, and Daisy helped, but Daisy was at Paris. Daisy doesn't know May like Paris knows May. And so um, it's a sort of unique opportunity that we have when we, when we are already um, uh, breeding them and raising them. It's a nice way because we were looking for, we we're kind of looking to um, spread them out to our house a little bit so that we can continue to have all our dogs in our house living with the family. And so in one of those ways was by um, putting some of them with the kids in the kids' rooms. And it's gone really well. It's um, done a lot for the kids. It really, uh, when they have that one thing to be responsible for, they take it very seriously. You know, they know that we'll notice if their dog's not being taken care of. Yay! Thank you. If anybody is wondering, so I've had a lot of requests, I think a lot of questions about which snuffle mat in particular this is. I don't think it would still be available, but they still have it on Amazon. I'm going to show the picture of it. There it is on Amazon. This one is the bigger size. It's $38. smaller version. It's like that. And that's thirty-two dollars. Oh, you thought I made them? That's funny because I'm not nearly that creative or artsy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
I appreciate that um, that you think I have that much talent. Yeah. The internet thinks very highly of you. <laughs> yeah. They haven't seen me crochet, that's for sure. Oh, perfect, Jan. I'm so, oh, I love it. I'm so happy. Jan says they ordered the smaller version and that many loves it. The brand, because um, some of them, there's a lot of different brands, and so my parents were actually asking which one they should get, and so I just went and ordered and had one set to their house, and then when I went to visit them, I saw how awful it, like the quality was terrible, I felt awful, and so um, the brand that we use is A-W-O-O-F on Amazon. Oh. A W O O F. I love that it has the 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 tiny little toy. Yeah, because that's a it's Oh, that's cute. So the one that I had sent to my folks' house, the felt um, leafy stuff, it was really stiff. And so when it it came all folded up and so it was just yeah when I went there and um We paid more for it a year ago. We paid $39.59 for it. And now it's 38 something.
Lisa. Hi, Jean.
Yeah, I do, Jean. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, you know what? Oh, he's a zip. Oh, it's not long enough. He's a big guy. He's a charger. He's a charger. He's a charger. I'm going to get a measurement. Oh. Uh, what? Come here, Vienna. Lacking a fabric measuring tape. Here, let's get your Thank you. 
Come here, Theo. Come here, Theo. Let's get the rest of you. You perfectly. She just rested on my shoulder. Remy is, for anybody wondering, Remy is resting very happily and comfortably on our bed. Um, when I walked in her last, she didn't even budge. She didn't look up or anything. Which, I mean, this is a Remy that we don't need to know because she's so bouncy and energetic that it's very, very um, 
very new to us and to Remy. Yes, I do.
Daddy. Keep forgetting that it's Sunday. Keep forgetting that it's Sunday. Yeah.
Um, I'm full, but Deb might eat it. Thanks for offering. I don't. Is he in um, the laundry room or the bathroom or the four seasons room? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Bradley, he's around. Um, Drew, he was offering up his cinnamon roll, so you know. I don't know if he mentioned it to you, but he yeah. was offered. Okay.
love you. I love you too. Do you want anything? Need anything? Nope. I'm just working on organizing some of this.
white foot was soundly defeated and she was first incumbent mayor in Chicago to not get a second term in 30 years. Wow, I saw this. people, a lot of Chicago people, like, rejoicing. Yeah. That. So, I didn't know any of the background, though, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah. You can take Paris with you. You can take Paris with you if you want. You guys hear the puppies snoring? I know it's pom pom. I see.
the other story. What's up? Oh, yeah. Oh, it didn't have to be 
connected to be able to get to it right away, but that's because I want to spend more time on it. Okay. I want to make it nice. I don't want to, I don't want to mess up.
Yeah. <laughs> 
Oi, Theo. Oi, Rio.
You got, you got some felt. Mm -hmm. Is it obvious?
When she was wagging her tail, she was hitting Van on the face. Thank you. 
and they flew back to like two cars and they were mean to each other and I was going around the floor for them to do the car swap and the girl at the bottom they had like this like they like the the Emmy is so happy in our bedroom. It took probably like a week for her to finally adjust because she's such a submissive dog. It's like she she didn't want to upset any of the other more dominant dogs. And so it took a little bit for her to be okay going in there. And But now she is so happy in there. She hasn't moved all morning. Um, she's all curled up on top of a blanket um, on like a corner of the bed. So she's a happy camper. I've got to retake her temperature. Oh, hey there, Nisho. I didn't see you earlier. We got a few other people. Dean, Patrick, Sweets. How are you guys? Hi, Tom Tom. Hi, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yes, you went out. May took these hilarious photos of Vienna and she added little like props to them. I asked her to show the live stream because it was so fun. They were so funny. But she had Vienna posed in all these little little characters. It was really cute. Kids make it much more fun. Yeah, of um would you could you make some of each of them and I'll create a collage of the thirty or twenty for the thumbnail? Here's one picture that May took of Vienna. Yes, Vienna, that's you. That's you. That one, that one freaks me up. There's another one. <laughs> Vienna rocking out. There she comes. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Aw. <laughs> that was my favorite. <laughs>
Make sure the babies are still here. You want to see the babies? I shaved her belly fur and her her belly fur and her pubes uh, shaved those up yesterday evening. So she's, um, that way whenever she goes into labor, her, her uh, puppies can latch real easily. They start losing, their fur starts thinning as they get closer. And the pregnancy and her fur was thinning quite a bit, which was helpful. But it's best to take it all off so you can see everything that's going on.
takes a lot of fluid to dissolve them. They absorb a lot of moisture. Like if you're going to put it in your mouth, it would just suck your mouth dry. So, really? Yeah. They absorb a lot. Oh. Are you ready to come out, Remy? I can't quite tell what you want. What do you want from Remy, Remy? I spit out a little back to sleep. She saw me from walking. Oh, she did? Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that when I come in here to scoop, you immediately have to go? Boy, Rio, Rio, look at the boy. Look at the potty. Yes. Hey, Remy dog. Hi, baby.
You know, we've got um I ate the hot dog girl. You ate your hot dog all gone? We have about a gazillion of these um, ESA dog harnesses. And so I just realized that we have so many of these that are never going to get used. Um, they're like puppy size. And so for some of our dogs that um, we know are going to be ESA dogs, something we can send home with them.
Oh, Bradley. Diana. Hey there, Shalini. How are you? Good girl, Diana.
You're good at staying away from the road? Yeah. That's yeah. good.
I'll come under the table.
this format information and stuff coming out of it, which you usually indicate the hole. Yep, there it is. It's in that bag.
Bradley.
getting to the very end of the day. And kind of all of them has to be picked up the, the card that Elizabeth has had and that she's had and finally finally got the information my immune system told it won't pull through. And it finally got to me and so I got kind of all four sense in my throat. So it's kind of kind of funny that you know the more it goes in my throat and see the reaction. Oh no, oh no, so much food to hear off of the squeaky bowl. Oh no, oh no. Taking a nap in my lap this morning. Hey Joe, yeah, well, I, I wouldn't say that my heart is broken for Enzo. I'm very happy that Enzo went with his family yesterday, and and I know that Miss Me 
is doing great. Um, so it's, it's when when the puppies go home to their new families, it's it's a a, a pretty happy day for us because uh, these families that have been watching their puppies grow up for the last eight weeks, eight nine weeks with us, um, they finally get to to go home with them, and they uh, it's a it's a very happy day. So. I'm not too, too, I wouldn't say that, uh, I mean, Enzo was a sweet boy and then he was a sweet girl. And I know that they are uh, at very happy and loving homes right now. I know, hey Macy, uh, so no, no, uh, no updates on Remy right now. Or like I should say, no, there hasn't been any changes. Her temperature has gone up just a little bit, and um, so it doesn't look like it's going to be today. Uh, uh, she's in with Elizabeth right now, just uh, sleeping. She she is sleeping a lot. That is one thing. I'm not sure if Elizabeth told you guys, but she um, she's you know normally a very bouncy uh, dog, and she'll be up and about usually you know, having fun. But uh, the last three days or so she has just been absolutely wiped out she's been sleeping uh, all the time it seems like good girl mini or good girl vienna good girl vienna that's right make a nice big booby good girl vienna Oh my goodness, what are you doing, puppy man? Oh shoot, uh, I wonder. I hope you can hear me. Oh goodness gracious.
Thank you. 
Potatoes. Are you ready for Leo dog? Leo is the best puppy on the earth.
could maybe in one of the different kind of teaching kind of how it works. You know, we have a pie tray. We have to the problem with the mountains are so cool. Why are you being able to fight them?
Love you to sleep with him. We'll be cursing you. Oh no, I can't be in here. <laughs> I've been sleeping with him, so he won't curse me. So you do that. Daisy Doodle, come on. Daisy.
Stop chewing on the basket, silly dogs. dogs. You're naughty doggies. You're naughty doggies. You figured it out. You figured it out. You're naughty doggies.
Guys, what do you think Remy's puppies are going to look like t tonight or tomorrow night? I bet they're going to be beautiful. Sam, I am gonna love them. I'm gonna love them to the bottom of my heart.
game. I think it's going to be an awesome party. Why you guys always stare at me and give me that look? into the camera that's real the real problem I'm always being attacked by the puppies, Timber. <laughs> Anna! Anna! Hey, Theo! Good girl, Vienna. Good girl. Can you uh, do some more cookbook to you? You okay, we go? Theo. Theo is just digging under the the bed. Vienna is a little bit mighty. I agree. Who do you guys think was smaller, me or Vienna? Probably, I think Vienna. Oh no, Mimi.
They are both small, but I'm trying to remember the picture of Minnie and Deanna. It was, they were really close, but I'm pretty sure it was like Minnie. Hey, Dad. This cannot be tracked. Okay. I am getting really excited for the puppies. Linda.